welcome to this review of this custom poker keyboard. I don't know anymore how many times modern customized keyboards or pokers have been requested, but if I had a penny for each one, I wouldn't have to rely on YouTube advertising money to do these reviews, that's for sure. This one is on loan to me from Necro Woman X after I reached out to the Dutch keyboard community for a board with these switches in it, and she and her spouse Necro Man X kindly agreed to lend me this cool little board, which is interesting beyond just the switches as it happens. The poker, spelt with a 3 to symbolise geekness and nerddom, and the fact that it's the third model in the line, is manufactured by Vortex, a company that's run by members of the Chinese keyboard community KB Talking. It's a series of space-saving 60% keyboards employing MX-type switches with a variety of features and it's a common target for customization, as is the case here. The keyboard is fully programmable with three layers using keyboard commands and onboard memory storage. I've seen and in fact own keyboards that rely on external software for programming instead, but I've always found good old onboard programming to be nicer and more reliable with less stuff that can go wrong. There are also dip switches on the back of the board that allow you to switch between QWERTY, Colmac, and Dvorak, but being a fossil, I keep it at QWERTY instead. Unlike the Poker 2, the 3 series has a solid aluminium case, which is incredibly rigid and responsible for the keyboard's considerable bulk. Especially for such a small keyboard, it has quite some heft to it, almost exactly 800 grams. It uses a standard mini USB to USB detachable cable, and it has full N-key rollover to fulfill all your gaming needs and desires. One thing to note is that although the case is unlikely to ever suffer significant damage, the case is only on the bottom of the keyboard, and it doesn't protect the switches or the keycaps, so if it gets hit from the top, or especially from the side, you can still incur considerable damage to the caps and switches. This was likely done for aesthetic and space-saving reasons, as a rimmed or especially bezeled case would offer more protection, but take up more space. Other than that, it's a pretty sturdy design though. The layout is a typical 60% ANSI one, and to be honest I'll never understand why people need or even can live with boards smaller than a full size. I mean, look at my desk, do you really need all this space? Anyway, that's obviously a matter of opinion and personal preference, so no use arguing over that. On to the switches, which is the reason I requested this keyboard in the first place. It uses switches that are known as Zelio Stottles, a custom hybrid between a Zelio switch, a famous tactile switch custom made by Gatoron for Zeal PC, and the slider and click jacket of an Aristotle switch, which is an extremely cheap and common clicky Cherry MX clone. Aristotles, unlike Cherry MX and more traditional clones, use a very different click jacket which uses somewhat bizarre looking vampire teeth at the end of the cams that hold the contacts open. The irony is that when you combine this super cheap slider and jacket assembly with a Zelio switch, you end up with a very different and very satisfying switch. After I tried these out a few times at the UK meetups, I knew I wanted to do a video about these because even though I'm not known as a cherry lover, I think these switches are really nice. In fact, I'd say these switches are the best that the MX design has to offer. Unlike any other MX switch, these have a true, nice, even sharp tactile bump to them, and they have a nice medium light weighting. It's honestly really nice to type on these. The switches still use a plastic clicker, but these Zelia Stottles definitely have a better sound than other MX switches, deeper and fuller. During gaming, which requires some rather non-standard keyboard usage, I did find that some of the switches took ever so slightly longer to get back up, or they didn't completely register properly in a pinch. But for any normal finger work, such as typing, I never experienced any problems. As such, I can honestly recommend them for typing, but if you use your keyboard primarily for gaming, during which key feel isn't really important anyway, I recommend something else. The keyboard normally comes with ABS double shots on backlit models and PBT die subs on non-backlit ones, but this one has a set of custom spherical Max Keys ABS double shot SA profile keycaps, which with their tall height and dish tops and large centered font reminds me of the keycaps of old. They're also quite expensive from what I've seen, but then again, most custom keycap sets seem to be. 
There are a few sets I'd want whose Gru buys have now closed, and I can't even imagine how much those would cost to buy now, even if it were still possible. This right Windows key, which also doubles as a function key, has been slightly damaged. I've been told that's because of nail polish. As most nail polish nowadays is dissolved in acetone or EA, and the caps are ABS, that would definitely explain what's happened here. They're thick ABS, and they're partly responsible for this board's superior sound compared to normal Cherry MX Blue boards. I'll show you what I mean using a standard G83000 Cherry MX Blue keyboard. It's hard to compare with the standard board because the chassis and keycaps are so different, but here's what the loose switches sound like compared to each other. Apart from Zelistotls, there are also Gatistotls and Cherrystotls, which are hybrids with Gatorons and Cherries, respectively. These are fairly comparable, but they're not quite the same in feel and sound. Gatistotls are nearly the same, but they feel ever so slightly less tactile, and they sound more high-pitched, so I don't like them as much as the Zelia ones. Cherry stottles are the hardest to make of the three because cherry switches have less play in the parts, so it's quite challenging to get the click jacket behind the contact leaves without damaging the long, frail teeth of the click jacket. Possibly as a result of the lack of play, or <laughs> maybe just because they're cherries, they're the scratchiest of the three, but they do have a significantly deeper and bassier sound than the other two. Overall, even between these three, I prefer the Zelia Stottles. They're just a little bit nicer than the others. Really, they're great switches. I dare say they're easily the best MX switches I've ever tried. So overall, this is a really nice board. I really enjoy using it. Because of the cramped layout and very occasional switch ding, I tended to use another board while playing some games. But for general use and typing, it's excellent. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.